This is episode 119 of the Rise Up Podcast. We're a morning radio show hosted by Steve and Tim on Family Life, a network of stations across New York and Pennsylvania. This podcast is a weekly conversation designed to help you think and laugh and keep your eyes on Jesus. If you haven't already, subscribe today so you don't miss a single episode. And find out more about our show at familylife.org. Coffee? Check. Music? Check. Fun and encouragement? Check and check. It's Rise Up with Steve and Tim on Family Life. Moving! Oh, I hate it. That's, if I was going to put a list of things I <laughs> like the least, uh, moving uh, would be one. I'm talking about physically. Like, oh, doing the stuff. You're going to be moving, uh, okay, from, and you have to gather your stuff and you have to put it in your car or a truck <laughs> or a van and you have to physically pick up stuff and move. And, uh, uh I don't like moving. Here is my question for you, Steve. Mm-hmm. I think most of the physical part of moving is a mental game. Like, who's got the brain power to do this giant U-Haul Tetris game? Is Audrey the skilled one of that in the family? Because I can tell you for a fact, if it was packing the truck left up to me, mm. I, I would like to figure out how it's all going to fit in there. It wouldn't happen. We'd right. need it. We'd need a motorcade ah. of of you because we would be so inefficient. Yeah, Audrey is the better arranger okay. of a of of putting the things in the proper way, best spatial relations yeah. kind of thing. I've never been been good at that. Oh. And you said mental game. That's interesting because even when the fact of and I'll just go back to the move when we moved from our family from Oklahoma to New York, which obviously that's yeah. that's just more than moving down the street or mm. moving across town. That's a long move. But it was just the mental part of the thinking, looking around the house and going like, how it was too overwhelming oh, sure. to think of like, oh, how's this even going to start? So the overwhelming part almost puts you in freeze mode, mm-hmm. uh, sometimes just with life in general. If you have something huge in your life. Not talking even about moving. It's like it freezes you uh, because yeah. you're like, I don't even know where to start. Yes, absolutely. Oh, I totally, completely relate with that. But here's the interesting part. Well, I was talking recently with my daughter-in-law, and we were talking about this whole moving thing. And I learned something about her, and I guess there are other people, obviously, like her. We are talking about the, just the whole moving thing. And I said, oh, I hate moving. And she goes, what do you hate about it? And I said, well, just the physical Picking up of things, and <laughs> moving them from one That's place too much to the other. Work, it That's is. like work. And she goes, and she looked at me with this odd puppy dog look of like, you know, the the turn, like, oh, I mean, what what do you mean? I'm like, well, I just don't like doing that. And and she goes, oh, that's not the. I don't ever think of that. However, her family, her dad's like a house flipper, has been all the time. So mm. she's moved, you know, so many times uh, during her twenty something years. Okay, and I never did that. So it's something she's used to. So I guess just if you're used to it, maybe I don't know if I did it 10 more times, whether I'd love it, though. I wonder if it's the change that's difficult, Hmm. because I feel like saying none of us like change. And I know that's not entirely true because there's somebody saying, I love change, change. I thrive on change. But I don't know. Is that just because you change so often? What if you changed your changing and you stopped changing? Hmm. Then would you like it? My point is, I think all of us like what we're familiar with. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're familiar with change and so we're okay with that. Maybe we're familiar with, we moved, you know, maybe you moved every five years growing up. So, you know, it's familiar to you. But I wonder if change from our comfort, from our familiarity is what's difficult for us. I know it'd be really difficult for me. Uh, I, I'm, I'm familiar with the place I live. I, I I like being where I am, knowing what's going to happen every day, knowing what my road is like when I take a walk with my dog, you know, who I'm going to get to say hi to on that road. Changing all that, losing that familiarity, I'd find that to be a really tough thing. But I wonder if that's part of what's behind it more when it's difficult is maybe it's not the change just for change's sake. It's it's losing what we're familiar with. That's right. That old comfort zone. I like my mm-hmm. daily activities. Mm-hmm. I like my routine. Mm-hmm. And now you're going to upset my routine because I have to go to a new routine. And yeah, I, I don't mind so much the moving of the, oh, I'm going to meet new people. I have to make new friends. Mm. That that doesn't, I don't think that really bothers me. Not that I've huh. ever, we didn't do a lot of moving around when I was a kid. We, we When I was like two years old, we moved into a house and that was the house I grew up in and stayed in, and I went away to college. And when I came back, my parents had moved to another house. But was that hard? When I came back to another house, yeah, 
was different. It was huh. it was weird. I found myself driving. They only moved a few miles uh, oh. to a different house. And, oh, see. Mm. Yeah. And so I did, mm. you know, I, I did, and I still do when I go back to the hometown, I'll drive past the old house to go yeah. like, that's where I grew up and all that kind of stuff. So you're so. sentimental about it, but it didn't bother you too much. No, I don't, mm. no. Because I didn't have to physically move. They did all the moving. <laughs> it's like I was in college. Right. I was away. <laughs> they, they did, did all the, the They did the physical stuff. I didn't mind the other stuff. Oh, that's funny. See, for me, that would be the hardest thing is like the, the you know, talking about the new friends and whatnot mm-hmm. and realizing I'm leaving all those people. I'm leaving the church family. I'm leaving the people. That'd be the hardest part of moving for me. And in the past, it's it's been what's made, you know, leaving an area really difficult is knowing I'm going to move to a different church family, going to move to a different group of people that mm-hmm. are going to have to become the new familiar for us, the new family, if you will. But it is interesting how change is part of the picture. Right. Not just like as Christians, just as humans. Change, apparently, change is not a bad thing or else God wouldn't have baked it into the fabric of the universe. You can't get away from it. Everything changes. Things are changing all the time. And I'm looking at Ecclesiastes being my favorite book of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And in chapter 7, it says, I love this, say not... Why were the former days better than this? For it is not from wisdom that you ask this. It's funny because I can feel like saying, oh, man, the old days. Oh, it was better than this before. And Ecclesiastes is saying, hey, don't say that, Tim. Don't ask yourself, why did it used to be better? Like Ecclesiastes says, that's not a wise question to ask. And that's really interesting because it's the same book that tells us there's a season for everything. There's a time for everything. And you know what? There's going to be a time for the next thing and for the next thing. And maybe that season you liked before, maybe it'll come back around again. Maybe it won't. But there's a season for everything, and that's part of God's design. So it's not wise for me to ask, I like the old days better. Can I have them back now? Nope. There's a new season now, and God's got a good reason for that one too. That's right. It goes back to that old saying, whether it's moving or just change itself or whatever, even in a certain day, you know, life is... 10% 10% of what happens to you, 90% of how you react to it. That's good. So as God placed you in a different place, God mm. has you in a season of change. Well, God's ways are higher than our ways. And I mean, God has a way of knowing something we don't. Yeah. <laughs> just maybe. maybe. <laughs> so maybe we just say, okay, God, I trust you. Mm. I don't have to like it. I just trust you in this move. And as I always say, I trust you, God. Now, can someone else help move the furniture? (laughs) I don't want to do all that. Coffee? Check. Music? Check. Fun and encouragement? Check and check. It's Rise Up with Steve and Tim on Family Life. Been inspired this morning with yes. some of the, you know, we said had fun with an acronym M A Y, and can you make an acronym that we can remember mm-hmm. for May? And we've been inspired this morning. Mighty, and, you, this one caveat, it's got a, a hyphenated word. Okay, okay? mighty and yoke bearing. Ooh, nice. Yeah, yeah, that's our God according to Kim. She's mm-hmm. an eerie. I love that. Yeah, mighty, awesome. Yahweh is another text we got. That's mm-hmm. good. Well, you, we say inspired. I've been inspired. Tim is. Oh, well, uh, M. A Y. Uh-huh. Listen, listen to this. Uh, oh, mm-hmm. uh, what, is, uh, what is that? That is, that? that is a kangaroo. Oh, that is a kangaroo. Uh, that's now, a kangaroo. They if, make that sound. If I'm correct, uh-huh. a kangaroo is a marsupial, right? It is, is a marsupial. Cr- yeah. Well, you just heard that. M A Y. Uh-huh. Marsupials <laughs> are yellow. There's a. That's. Keep praying for me. You don't have to be a morning person to join us. Actually, you don't even have to be a person. It's Rise Up with Steve and Tim on Family Life. It doesn't take a lot to talk to God. It it, it doesn't. Now, sometimes Jesus prayed all night. We know that. He did that sometimes. But sometimes Jesus said all you need to pray is 50 words. That's like four sentences. Hmm. The Lord's Prayer, it comes out to about 50 words. That's that's not a lot. It's because prayer isn't about the word count. You know, it's not a social media mm-hmm. post where they're counting that. It's not a term paper. You've got to get to that <laughs> limit of words. No. Prayer is just like I think basically everything else about God, about the heart. Mm-hmm. He's looking at our hearts. Maybe all you can get out is one word. And I'm thinking that's going to be enough. It's like going to your best friend. They know what's on your mind just by looking at your face, but they want to hear you say it anyways. Just pray. However long it takes, however many words it is, just pray to God what's on your heart. 
We might not know what God has planned for today, but we're going to face it together. This is Rise Up on Family Life. Kangaroos or Kariru, <laughs> as my toddler calls them. What word? Did you have a little one in your home say a word wrong? You kind of wish it was so cute, though. You wish they'd never say it right. Ruthie and Daniel from Sugar Grove texted, Our daughter says, upside down and upside up. <laughs> it makes sense. It really does make sense. <laughs> Another text says, Our daughter used to say uh, for uh, caterpillar, uh-huh. you say patticular. <laughs> I don't know. That's still kind of cute. It is. Good morning. Who's this? I'm Sue, and I'm from Waterloo. When my son was a toddler, he couldn't say Uncle Pat, so he said Uncle and 20 years later, Uncle Pat is still Uncle Pa. Oh, and Uncle so Pat would have it no other way, I bet. Yeah, he loves it. I'm Kathy from Endwell. It's my grandson. He For wheelbarrow, it was Baba Weebo. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> Baba Weebo. Oh. I even like that better than wheelbarrow. I do, too. <laughs> say it anymore. He's 21. So. Uh, oh, yeah, God. at the job site, that could get a little <laughs> odd. Like, hey, bring that Baba Weebo over here. Yeah. Like, yeah, what? Say what? <laughs> <laughs> my name's Rob, and I live in Rush. Well, it wasn't a word that my kids used to say, but it was when we said goodnight. Uh, they'd say, sleep tight, see you good morning. Oh, see you good morning. See you good morning. Oh, oh I bet nice. you loved hearing that every night. Yeah, three beautiful girls. Do you still share that today with them? Yes, I do. I thought oh, so. I, and they laugh about it. Great memories. Hi, this is Peggy from Gold PA. Instead of Aunt Peggy, my nephew used to call me not Eggy. <laughs> not <laughs> Not Eggy. <laughs> and I really miss it because he's in his 40s now. Uh, oh, he doesn't call you that anymore? Not Eggy. No. Uh, we will. We'll call you Not Eggy. <laughs> Thanks for calling, Not Eggy. Yep. May the blessings of the Lord be with you in all that you do today. This is Rise Up on Family Life.